But what's up guys, everything Apple Pro here, and it's an exciting day in the world of Apple today. So Apple just had Worldwide Developers Conference day one where they announced new software. Unfortunately, there wasn't any new hardware. So as a quick recap, I wanted to get into the details before I show you the actual firmware, just what happened today. So first off, Watch OS 3, for those of you that do have an Apple Watch, there will now be quick launching. So launching applications usually took about five to 10 seconds. Now things are instant. There's also an app switcher view where you can basically see a preview of apps without having to open them, a new control center, and just a reimagined interface slightly easier. Also, the reply menu became easier when it comes to messages, so you don't have to take that extra step to click reply. There's also an easy way to actually type and write on your device using the new Scribble feature. Some new clock faces, including mini, as well as an activity clock face, which is probably my favorite thing I've learned about watchOS 3. It looks pretty slick, definitely a much more significant upgrade than watchOS 2. There's also some new APIs for developers, but in general, it just becomes a little bit easier. Of course, I will be doing a full review once it drops just a little bit later but i did like in particular the fact that they made the interface easier i in particular love the app switcher feature which is activated by double tapping the side button also if you hold that button it'll bring up a new sos mode which you can call 911 with in any country so certainly something that can make your life easier not easier i mean safer if you ever need it but a little bit underwhelming again this is the apple watch there's not many ways they can't improve in but when it comes to the fundamentals such as activities replying to messages opening apps quickly they certainly did improve that there's some breathe application if you're into uh, yoga which will help you but i you know i would never use that so the preview for it is today and remember you cannot downgrade an apple watch so if you update to it you're stuck on it until the release which is later in fall so next up they talked a little bit about apple tv i don't even own a tv right now so i don't have one but there are some nice changes to the interface there's a dark mode there's a new remote for your iphone as well as siri being more aware of what you're asking so if you want to search for a specific topic she'll find it and there's a new app that manages all of your subscriptions to tv in one place so certainly makes life easier so next up mac os sierra we knew the name was going to be changed and indeed it's now more in line with the rest of the naming scheme mac os sierra is the next name of the landmark and there are a few notable changes but it's not massive so you'll be able to use your apple watch to auto unlock your mac when you come into proximity of it i don't know if this works with iphone but there's now optimized storage which i honestly I don't like the idea behind it. When you're running low on storage on your device, Apple tries to sell you their iCloud storage, which will basically take some older files you haven't used in forever and put it on that. There's now Apple Pay on Safari, so using your device to authenticate it, you can go ahead and pay for websites, fill in the data using Apple Pay, which does make life easier. However, I'm a bit disappointed there's no Touch ID and no MacBooks at all, but tabs, great new feature, and this isn't just for Safari. There are now tabs on many applications, and it's just built in. And there's now picture-in-picture -picture video, which is built in, so it'll make multitasking a little bit easier. That iPad feature is now available on Mac OS Sierra. Split screen view for Safari safari as well and siri so that feature that was rumored it turned out to be entirely accurate the interface is exactly the same and there it is you can easily pin stuff from siri to notification center actually works pretty well so Basically, that's macOS Sierra. It is an overhaul. However, it's not as big as I thought it would be. Public beta starts in July, and I'm actually surprised Apple's support for older MacBooks is still present. So moving on to the main subject of the show, iOS 10. No crazy naming scheme like iOS X, pretty in line with Apple. So there are 10 major new features according to Apple, starting with number one, which is their reimagined lock screen. And I gotta say, I'm very excited to try this out. So not only does it look so much better, but it's now more intuitive. And you can basically have your notifications stay there without clearing them with Touch ID. There are 3D Touch widgets to those notifications, and you can slide left and right to do different things. You can clear notifications also with a 3D touch press. Control center is slightly reimagined. Sliding right will jump you into the camera. Sliding left will jump you into today view for widgets and all that. And I gotta say, I love the work Apple's done with 3D Touch. They really expanded upon it, and there's so much that they talked about. I'm sure there's so much they missed, which I will be covering everything so the lock screen is pretty much ios 10's biggest change where you will be able to see the change number two is siri unfortunately not as big of a change as i thought but 
the most important one was third party API, which gives developers so much access to what you can do with Siri. You can actually book rides directly inside of Siri, do so much inside of Siri without needing to go into separate applications. Lots of improvements to CarPlay as well. And Apple made some adjustments to QuickType as well. I'm hoping autocorrect has been adjusted too. But anyways, QuickType is now more intelligent based on what someone else asks you. QuickType will present you different things up in the gray bar up top which is great. And of course, Siri is behind all of those suggestions as well. So number four is the Photos application. Just as predicted, Apple did make an overhaul to the Photos. It's easier to find places on the maps. And actually, Apple made a huge change with face detection. Not only face detection, but object and scene recognition as well. They have a huge tech talk about how it's recognized. But basically, you know, your photo library will be scanned for different areas you were at, even things you were doing, such as riding a horse. And that was a really cool example. And there's a new feature called Memories. It will create a new tab in Photos where it'll group your trips, topics in a new little category that summarizes it in a photo slideshow. It'll actually create a video for you if you want. Really good stuff. And next up, Maps. So Maps has a completely new interface. It was completely redesigned. Hopefully it's smarter, but it is now proactive. So you'll get better suggestions based on where you're at. It'll actually pan and zoom, and it has a more intuitive interface that basically directs you through traffic as well. And any changes to maps I will absolutely take because I think it's in a terrible dark place right now. There are some adjustments to CarPlay as well, and Maps is now available to developers as a third-party API. So you can book rides directly within Maps. Super cool. So next up, number six is the Apple Music application. All new design and entirely made to sell you Apple Music. I gotta say, I got a huge vibe from Apple that they're just trying to sell their services to you through these new features. But anyways, it's bolder, easier to find your categories. They're just listed right there. You don't have to go searching for them. And it genuinely does look like a great upgrade. There's also lyrics too, just by scrolling from now playing. So that's the new Apple Music app. Next up, Apple News, boring. I had no care for this one whatsoever, but it is redesigned. There are sections that are tailored to you, trending, featured, top stories, and there are new subscriptions if in case you wanted that. So next up, HomeKit. It's compatible with a slew of new accessories, and if you have a new HomeKit enabled home with a bunch of smart accessories, it's a really cool thing to have. I'm hoping my old blinds will be compatible and they'll slide up with this upgrade. <laughs> Just kidding. But anyways, there is a new app available on your device with 3D touch compatibility. You'll be able to create scenes and it'll have that widget in your control center. So you can directly use those third-party accessories from within the control center. Super cool stuff if you have the accessories for it. And number nine, something Apple hasn't focused on in a while is the phone application. So now there is voicemail transcribing Originally predicted to be done through Siri, it's not. It's actually really simple. And there is now an API for developers to go ahead and put their apps inside of your phone application. And instead of just a notification, you will get the full phone experience when someone calls you through a VoIP messaging system, such as Skype or even WhatsApp. And lastly, Apple actually seemed quite proud of this one. So the new messages application, they've put a lot of work into probably one of the most used apps on your phone. So now messages is a lot more intelligent. You have a live photo view right inside of the camera clicker. Emojis are now three times bigger. Really cool. I'm sure it'll come with a bunch of new emojis with Unicode 9.0. And there's a bunch of things that'll make your life easier. Also, you can replace your words with emojis. So Siri will scan your written text for things it can replace with emojis. There's also new effects, which is actually kind of a neat feature nobody has done or not that I've seen. There's one that's invisible. You can slide with your finger and it will reveal the text for special moments when you just want to surprise someone. Kind of cool, but probably something that will be forgotten with time. I don't I don't know, I don't see myself using this often, but you can actually kind of like a like someone's message, especially useful in a group messaging as well. Handwritten things as well that you can animate, Apple calls it digital touch, and there are pretty neat full screen effects that you can send with your messages that will play in the background. Kind of neat, but still something very, very important. This is missing a dark mode, which I don't see. So here's just a little demo of replacing words with emojis and digital touch, kind of cool. So those are pretty cool, but again, we have to see if it's actually going to be used or something that's going to be forgotten. Also, third-party API for messages. You will have an app drawer in your messages where you can quickly pull up stickers from celebrities, whatever you use with your messages, you'll be able to pop them right on, which is kind of neat. I gotta admit, Apple really put a lot of thought into their new messages application. So in a nutshell, 
that is iOS 10. There's going to be a hundred new features we don't even know about even more. So I will be covering everything else in extensive videos later on. But I just want to say a bit underwhelming for Apple's event. I was hoping for new MacBooks. I was really, really hoping that Apple would add a dark mode to iOS. But man, aside from some really cringy moments uh, where Apple really tried to make the crowd interact, but they wouldn't, I got to say not bad of a presentation. I'm very excited for iOS 10. Now, I'm pretty amazed at Apple's support for older devices. It's a bit confusing because Apple didn't list them all here, but the only device that will be getting dropped is the iPhone 4S. Every other device will still be supported. Now, what the performance will be, we'll have to test, but that is quite amazing. You know, props to you, Apple, for supporting older devices and not making people update their phone in order to update their software. And if you guys want to learn how to code Swift, Apple has a really cool free application they released on iPad. But anyways, that is Worldwide Developers Conference 2016. Very underwhelming, but again, iOS 10 should be good. I will be covering everything, guys, here on this channel. Stay tuned. Peace.